I'm speechless right now. That center ice stuck us with the Golden Knights call on both channels last night that was playing that Preds Vegas game? No, not that. Somehow from Sunday night to Monday morning in a span of 12 hours, Predemption gained 12 subscribers. Oh yeah, that. Good job by both of us, not just you for getting us that far. But yeah, tell us, get on that and don't let it happen again. Everybody's hands go up, way up, as the Nashville Predators defeat the Vegas Golden Knights in Vegas, Nevada, in T-Mobile Arena by a score of 3-2. to two. The Preds haven't lost since the turn of the new year, and at least heading into Wednesday night's games are back in first in the Central Division. Over 40% of the Preds season has now been played. How many experts thought the Preds would be this far up the standings, this far into the season? None of them. And early on in the first couple minutes, it wasn't looking good for the Preds as there was a bad defensive breakdown allowing a 2-on-0 on Soros with Marcheseau and Smith, but the Vegas Golden Knights aren't able to open the scoring. Preds would get some solid chances to finally open the scoring as about seven minutes in, Duchesne has a great chance right in front of Thompson, but he's robbed by the goalie. And about a minute later, Duchesne gets it to Phil Forsberg, who pulls off a sweet dig, but just can't get it by Thompson. Not the first time Forsberg would pull off some sweet moves in this game. Tanner Janot and Keegan Kosar get into a tussle in the first. And you know what happens every time there's a fight in a Preds game over here at Predemption? We always give the edge to the Predator. Preds have some solid looks in that first period, but can't open the scoring. But fortunately, Vegas can't convert either and we're scoreless after the first. Predators don't have to wait very long into the second period to open the scoring in this game. Mikhail Grenlin carries the puck down the left wing board and he sees his teammate and passes it back to Philip Forsberg. He gets the puck, he snaps it up and over Logan Thompson, opening the scoring. Preds lead 1-0. That opening goal seems to inspire the road team as about seven minutes into the period, the loose puck comes back to the blue line in the Vegas Golden Knights zone. and. Off-season acquisition, Philip Myers takes a shot on net, and it's in! It's tipped in by none other than Yakov Trenin in his 100th NHL game, 2 nothing Preds! That makes Philip Myers' first point as a Pred about time. Momentum continues to grow for the Preds as they would go on to kill a Vegas power play with their best penalty killer to Captain Roman Yossi sitting in the penalty box. There would be late 4-on-4 four four play in the last few moments of the second period, and though neither team could convert during that sequence, the Preds did come really close to making it 3-0 at that point of the period, with first Johansson to Forsberg, and as quickly as I say that, Forsberg got into Johansson, but alas, the Preds still lead Two nothing after 40 minutes. Early in the third period, the refs perhaps blow the whistle a little too early on an icing call that the Vegas Golden Knights could have beaten out the Preds for. But I don't mind the call there and I don't mind that rule existing. How many players have been saved from serious injury ever since that rule has been in existence? Probably too many to count. Now, my question is, when is the league finally going to introduce the rule that the bench doors cannot be open when the puck is in play and prevent those serious injuries from happening when a player gets checked into the boards, incidentally, when that bench door is being opened, causing real damage? Just about six minutes into the third period, after the Vegas Golden Knights had been giving the Preds quite a push, there's one player on this Preds roster who said he's had enough and he's ready to give the Preds an insurance goal. Face-off win by Vegas in the Preds defensive zone. But there's a deflection and Philip Forsberg gets control of the puck and he skates out with it. And he's in the Vegas zone. Alex Petrangelo tries to stick handle the puck away. But like a football player, Forsberg goes stiff arm on him, gets control of the puck, driving in towards the Vegas zone, goes forehand, 
backhand past Logan Thompson. Three nothing Preds. Forsberg's 17th goal of the season. Now, with the two goals Forsberg would ultimately score in this game, he moves within 15 of tying David Leguan and 16 of taking over the Preds franchise all-time goal scoring record. So about a minute after Forsberg's 3-0 goal, follow the penalty summary here if you please. First, the Preds get a delay of game penalty when the puck just went into the Preds bench and typically you're not supposed to call that officials. So that's fine. Vegas is going to get a power play. But then Marcheseau gets interference. So these teams play four and four. So maybe that was a makeup call. I don't know. But then soon after that, Roman Yossi gets a high sticking call. So Vegas gets a four and three power play. So what does Vegas decide to do with that? Oh, they're going to pull their goalie to get a five on three situation, even though Nashville is going to have an empty net to shoot at. Ken Grillon actually comes close to burying an empty netter, which would have made the last few moments of this game a lot less stressful for Preds Nation because even though they killed it off, Vegas would have the majority of the possession on the power play, which would lead into the following. Because the Preds definitely weren't home and cool. Pressure in the Preds zone about the eight minute mark left in the third period. Shot from the point, tipped in by William Carlson. There was thought that maybe it was goalie interference, but it wasn't. Preds lead down to 3-1. Vegas decided to pull Logan Thompson with about two minutes and change left to go in regulation. And from there on out, the majority of the play would be in the Preds defensive zone. Preds players desperate for air of trying to win this in 60 minutes, trying to get the two points. The players and the fan base clinching their butts, nervous as heck that the Preds are going to blow this game. And it got a little closer and a little bit more nerve wracking as with about a minute 50 left to go in regulation. Face off to UC Soros' is right in the Preds defensive zone. William Carlson wins the battle for the puck, gets it back to Alex Petrangelo, who passes it straight over to Shea Theodore, who blasts one home past UC Soros, reducing the Preds' lead now down to 3-2. Vegas would get the opportunity to pull Logan Thompson yet again, but the Preds would deny them the opportunity to tie this game at three. The Preds win the game 3-2. Two, UC Soros makes an amazing 42 saves for the game, 20 of them coming in a third period. So after the COVID pause, the Preds lost their first two games back, and then the calendar changed, and now the Preds won two in a row. So we feel a lot better, don't we, Preds Nation? Sure, those wins haven't been pretty, but they're wins. They're four points coming off of those two wins that gets the Preds that much closer to making the playoffs again this season. Preds perhaps took their foot off the gas there in the third, but unlike the Columbus game last week, last year, the Chicago game and this game, the Preds did what they had done in every game before that Columbus game, which is have a lead after two and you hang on to that lead. As well, what continues to be impressive is the Preds penalty kill because against this high powered Vegas offense and power play, the Preds killed off all three of their chances. Now the Preds trek into recently renamed Kings Arena, Crypto.com Arena, where you know Victor Arvidsson will be desperate to get a W against a team that traded him away. It should be a good one. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click a like. If you like this video, click subscribe. And thank you to everyone who has, if you really like this video. You can click on my channel name to find my social media. Tell all your friends about Predemption. And I would love another sub bump after this video. And I will talk to all of you after Thursday night's game.